This is The Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the McLaren GT3 rim by Fanatic. Now, Fanatic makes a variety of different wheel rims, and like all of them, the McLaren GT3 rim is intended to work with the Club Sport wheelbase as well as the CSL Elite wheelbase. The McLaren rim is a full replica of the real-life wheel that you will find in the McLaren GT3 race cars. The McLaren GT3 rim goes for $240, and that makes it one of the least expensive wheel rims from Fanatic, but to top it off, it's one of the lightest as well, coming in at only 1,045 grams or 2.5 pounds. The GT3 rim is a full-size wheel rim, measuring in at 300 millimeters or 12 inches from grip to grip. The McLaren rim is also multi-platform compatible and will work on your PC, your Xbox, or your PS4. Now, in all fairness, when the GT3 rim first came out, it came with that clamp-style mechanism for mounting it to the base. Now, this actually came to me from Brandon Waters, a good friend and patron, part of the Sim Pit Pit Crew, and he sent this in, and this was actually after installing the quick release. So this is exactly the way they now come at that $240 price, but Originally, this was one of the clamp style mechanisms on this wheel rim. So let's take a more detailed look at the Fnatic McLaren GT3 rim and talk about some of its features. Now, the most obvious thing, it's a butterfly shape. That's what I like to call it. It's that classic shape that you're going to find in just about every open-wheeled race car out on Earth nowadays, certainly like a Formula One type. And of course, you're going to find it in full-blown race prep cars like a McLaren GT3. Now, for the most part, you only have two hand positions. You're going to be at the nine and three hand positions, unlike a round wheel where you can put your hands anywhere on the wheel. The wheel rim starts with a heavy-duty plastic center part that somewhat works as a shell to all of its parts inside. It has a fake carbon fiber look to it. No, it's not real carbon, but it does give it a flashy look. And then to top it off, it has the McLaren GT3 logo in vivid orange, white, and red. Within the center hub, you have a variety of buttons, dials, and switches laid out mainly for operation with your thumbs while driving. In total, there are nine buttons, including an Xbox Connect button, two up and down switches, three dials, and one Fnatic funky switch. The buttons can be interchanged with the alternate covers that come along with the wheel that have typical sim racing identification marks on them. You can use them to replace the existing button covers to get more comfortable with the wheel. Then at the center top is the 1-inch OLED display in blue that will display onboard settings of the wheel. And it will also display in-game information like speed or gear indicator. The center part of the wheel extends all the way to the grips. The grips are each oversized rubber grips that are shaped to fit your hands. The grips themselves are grippy in your hands and the rubber, despite being fairly hard, is actually soft on your hand. Flipping the wheel over, we can take a look at the back side. The most prominent feature on the back are the paddle shifters. At first glance, we see the bold, orange, metallic, rocker-style shifter paddle on top. It is a metal, curved bar that extends from one side of the wheel to the other. The very ends of these bars have some texture stamped into them to give your fingertips a hint of grip when shifting. Below the main paddle shifter bar are two more levers, one on each side. They are made of plastic and are variable levers, much like the gas, the brake, or the clutch on most pedal sets. These lower paddles can be used as any mappable control. However, the intended purpose is the modern clutch of a supercar or a Formula One style car. The center dial of the rim will change the mode of the lower paddles, allowing for you to adjust the clutch bite point on the fly. At the center of the back is the new Fnatic Quick Release flange system. This has replaced the cheapo clamp style that I mentioned of the less expensive rims and gives this a more similar connection to the other Club Sport Series wheels. Inside of the all-aluminum quick release is the very common and slightly delicate Fnatic 13-pin layout. On the bottom side of the wheel rim is the tool holder that will hold the Allen wrench needed for the tightening of the quick release bolt. And then, on the very top of the rim is a little tiny metal pin. This is the pin that allows for the shifter bar to rock or teeter-totter or pivot back and forth. All in all, it is a great looking wheel and has many functions to make sim racers happy. 
Now, before we take this wheel out on track and see how it performs in our hands while driving, let's talk about its size, its shape, and some of its features. Now, I did mention its size. It is a full-size replica of the McLaren GT3 rim, and it is 300 millimeters or 12 inches grip to grip. And it is, again, very, very light, coming in at only 1,045 grams or two and a half pounds. Now, its overall mentions are actually 178 millimeters or seven inches tall and about 127 millimeters or five inches from the quick release to the face of the wheel. The grip section of the wheel is very thick when compared to many wheel rims out there. It has a flattened end and it is more oval than round in shape. The grips measure in at about 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch wide and then about 38 millimeters or one and a half inches front to back and then extend nearly the entire height of the rim or nearly 178 millimeters or seven inches tall. The main paddle shifter works on a rocker. So when one side is pulled, the other side pushes away. They are not adjustable in distance or tension and their total travel when engaged is only about 6.3 millimeters or a quarter of an inch. At rest, they are about 38 millimeters or one and a half inches from the back of the grips. At the end of their movement, there is a tactile and an audible click of the snap dome type buttons like on the other modern Fanatic wheels. The auxiliary paddles move independently and at rest are the same setback of a 38 millimeters or an inch and a half from the back of the wheel grip. However, when engaged, they move about 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch in travel. They use a spring type resistance and move very smoothly. And then at the end of their movement, there's just a hard stop, not the click of a button. These paddles are also not adjustable in distance or tension. The button layout on the McLaren wheel is really nice. The button groupings come in four regions of the wheel. On the upper part and on each side for each thumb, there are four buttons in range. Three are the standard buttons and the fourth is slightly larger and has a protective lip and takes a little bit more pressure to press in. These buttons are also built on snap dome buttons on the board and the click point is a release point feel more than a spring tension type resistance like normal buttons. The final standard button is on the bottom right and has the Xbox button logo on it and operates just like the other buttons with snap dome pressure resistance. Just to the inside of the top buttons on both sides is an up and down switch with red rubberized covers on them. They are very small switches and when moved up or down, they have a strong click that can also be felt and heard when engaged. And then just to the inside of the switches are the two main dials. These dials have 12 positions and are clearly identified by a number seen when the dial is turned. The dials go left and right and start and stop their movements at 1 and 12. They do not turn all the way around continuously. Each turn or click of the dials is fairly strong and will take deliberate movement for each click. And with each click, it will map or respond like an additional button, almost like a mini button box on the wheel. And then finally, the blue dial in the middle. It has four positions and it is used to change the mode of the extra paddle shifters. It changes from clutch bite point to handbrake and clutch mode to brake and throttle mode. And then finally, to mappable axis mode that can then be mapped in game. The final control on the wheel is the funky switch, common to Fanatic wheels. This is on the lower left side of the wheel in black and it is a five-way directional button or joystick and also has a rotary function adding another two controls to the wheel. The final moving part on the wheel is the little itty bitty teeny tiny button on the left side to turn on the tuning menu also familiar to all Fanatic wheels. Now, before I was able to use the McLaren GT3 rim by Fnatic, I actually had to do a full update to my Club Sport 2.5 wheelbase, which is pretty easy. I just opened up their firmware updater, let it do its thing, and then once it was all done, the wheel was recognized and I was able to get down to mapping my controls. Now, we could sit here all day long talking about mapping controls, talking in great detail about all the little minute functions of this wheel rim, but it really does come down to how does it drive? How does it perform? How does it work out on track? Now the McLaren GT3 rim out on track is what I would call an open wheeled racing wheel, despite it coming out of a GT3 car. 
It is that classic butterfly shape with hand positions that don't move. This means it is not really intended for hand over hand driving and again for me it works best in cars with fine steering. The shape of the wheel is very quick to turn in your hands and that actually makes it feel almost twitchy for oval racing or heavier cars. With that said and at the same time this wheel shape with its ultra fast turning feel is absolutely perfect for the highest precision cars like an open wheeler or even a McLaren GT3 I suppose. The grips in your hands feel very sturdy, the rubber on them offering a good amount of grip and comfort simultaneously. And when you give them that kung fu death grip at the moment of a heated race, they resist your strength well and at the same time remain comfortable. The wheel rim is also very stiff or rigid and there is no flex feeling from the grips, the hub or any part of the actual wheel rim. However, this stiffness does expose the slightest of wiggle with the quick release, but only when really flexing it. During driving, it is rock solid. The shifter paddles have a unique style to them that I've only used once before. It is a rocker style, so when I pull with one hand, the opposite side actually pushes away. This works well and feels good, but it did take some getting used to. And getting back to my kung fu death grip, at times my opposite hand was resisting the shift by holding the opposite paddle. It was only a short amount of time until I learned this and it was never an issue again. The travel on the shifters is very small and it does make for some very quick shifting, again engineered for an open wheel or a high performance car. The upside of these paddles is that if you turn the wheel so far that you have to release or move a hand, you can actually push with the opposite paddle to still shift one handed up or down. The bar is extremely rigid and has a heavy duty feel to its mechanism. The lower paddles are more like levers than shifters in that they move to their end stop position without a click. They are variable and are perfect for the handbrake, clutch, or any other control surface that works on a distance rather than a button press. They are in a very convenient position and can be accessed with the same ease as the main shifters. When using as a handbrake, for example, that extra distance of travel is needed. When using them as a clutch, you can actually adjust the point of engagement for perfect launches in Formula One cars or any other car for that matter. This was like getting a bonus handbrake along with my steering wheel for games like Wreckfest or for rally cars or for drifting or for any of those moments you need a handbrake in racing. The button layout is really nice. It is a great combination of spacing, placement and an assortment of button, dial, and switch types that make it easiest to remember their functions. And that is without even looking. And to make it even easier, you have the addition of the labeled buttons with common icons making it even easier if you actually look down and read your buttons. I find that while driving, I can easily access the upper buttons with both thumbs without losing much attention to steering. That gives me, even with my small hands, easy access to four buttons on each side without removing a hand from the wheel while driving. It also means that those two larger buttons with the guard for most critical controls are also right in play and there for easy memory. The additional buttons are all usable while driving but require a little bit of a hand movement to access them. The buttons again are all that snap dome technology, meaning that they have a good amount of tension preventing any movement and then full movement and button engagement at the moment of release. The best comparison I can give to you is almost the same sensation of a magnetic shifter where everything happens at the moment of release. A little different than the common spring resistance, then travel, then button engagement of other type buttons. With iRacing being one of my main sims, the up and down rocker switches ended up being perfect before moving between items or changing the amount of individual items while driving. The two 12 position rotary dials work like a series of buttons, with each indent or click of the rotary equaling a different button. In the case of iRacing, I thought this would work great for navigating through the menu screens while driving. It took a while to figure out the trick, but in the end, I mapped each menu to a specific window. For example, the number one position was the F1 or the information screen. And then position two was my standing screen and so on and so on through all the menus in the car. 
and this worked out great for my needs. While driving, the new OLED display is a little small and a bit too low in my view to be used much. I seem to prefer it displaying gear mode so I could verify when needed rather than the hard to keep track of and hard to read on the fly data like speed. In the end, I love having the display for when I'm changing profiles and making wheel adjustments. It still comes in handy, but not as cool as the larger one on the formula rim. All in all, this wheel worked perfectly and I was constantly surprised at how nice it was for the money compared to many other wheel rim options from Fnatic and the entire world. So at this point in time, I've reviewed a good couple handfuls of different Fnatic wheel rims and there are certain features that are common to all of them. So I really didn't spend a lot of time dwelling on like the tuning menu. I mean, you have all those great features built into that menu, being able to change things on the fly, whether you're talking about degrees of rotation, force feedback, ABS, so many different changes, drift mode, and you can do up to five settings. So if you want one setting for 360 degree ro rotation, you can do that. If you want another setting for 900 degrees of rotation, you can do that. Whatever you want, up to five settings. So that is common to all the wheel rims, and I didn't go into great detail about how to do that, but it is something you need to know about this wheel rim as well. So other than that, I think I have covered just about everything there is to tell you about the McLaren GT3 rim by Fnatic, but just to make sure it's perfectly clear, let's go ahead and break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, of course, and that being, it's such a light wheel rim, it makes it very fast turning. It's a good looking wheel rim. Authentic McLaren wheel look. Comfortable grip, stiff rim, no flex. Great wheel for disabled drivers, gas and brake on the wheel. Now comes with a quick release. Save up to five profiles on the wheel. Built-in display. Ability to push to shift when the wheel is turned too far for two-handed operation. Multi-system compatible. Plenty of buttons. Good button feel. Replaceable button covers with icons. So many buttons, it's like getting a button box on your wheel. And now on to the not so good, and I don't have a lot of negative things to say about this wheel, but let's start off with that rocker style shifter paddles. They are a little weird. Lower paddles feel cheap in plastic. Seam between the front and back cover could be cleaner. Rotary dials tricky to map. Hinge pin looks unfinished. Very small amount of travel on shifters. No rev lights. Slight amount of flex at quick release. And now on to the bottom line. Fnatic makes a huge, great variety of different wheel rims to choose from. They come in all sorts of different styles, different types of disciplines, and they work with all their various different wheel bases. But for the good wheel rims, you're looking at about $400, and that does increase the starting point for a Fnatic setup. At $240, that really lowers the startup cost. When you're adding a base, pedals, wheel rim, everything together, saving a little on the wheel rim is going to go a long way. And at $240, it also makes it a great option for a secondary wheel rim. If you already have a round rim and you're looking for something very open wheeled, it's not too expensive. It gives you that option as well. And at 240, you really are getting a lot of steering wheel, tons of buttons, tons of features, and a rigid strong wheel that feels like it will last a long time. I'm really glad that Fnatic went to a proper quick release with this because the Achilles heel had I tested it with that clamp would have been that clamp mechanism making the wheel feel so cheap. But with the quick release, it makes it feel like a legitimate contender, something that I would use on a club sport wheelbase without even thinking twice about it. In the end, the wheel was a good looking wheel and with its shape, it turned my rig into more of an open wheeler or full blown race car of sorts. Everything I need at my fingertips in a super quick to turn wheel built for aggressive driving. And this wheel also is a perfect solution. Let me tell you, I get a lot of emails from people, disabled drivers or maybe parents looking for a way to let their kids drive in their rigs when they can't reach or operate their pedal set. 
This is a perfect solution. This is one of the best and only solutions out there for those people. But with these levers, you have enough travel, you have enough tension that you can actually operate them fairly well. You can drive the entire sim with just this wheel. You don't need a shifter. You don't need a pedal set. You got everything you need there and that is a solution. And again, I get a lot of emails from people who are asking for specifically those type of levers, looking for a wheel that lets them not need a pedal set. So in the end, you got to think about it. Fnatic has so many different wheel rims to choose from. And if you're not even using Fnatic, you're using an adapter. There are so many wheel rims out there in the world to choose from. You got to kind of have your reasoning behind why you would choose or select any wheel rim. And this wheel rim actually has some features and coming in at that price point that I think make it a really good decision or a good choice for a lot of people. Let's say you've already spent a fortune. You already have an entire Fnatic setup, but you just want something to be very open wheeled. Uh, well, this is going to work perfectly for that, and it's only going to set you back to 40 compared to a bit more for the Formula Carbon or the Formula Black or a lot more if you're looking at the next level Podium Series wheel rims they're going to come out with. Who else might this be for? Let's say you're looking to get into a direct drive, but the wheel motor itself is just going to set you back so much you don't know how you're going to finish it off. This is a great solution. Get an adapter, work with this on a direct drive. Maybe this isn't the level you want. Maybe you're spending a thousand or two thousand dollars on a motor. You want something that reflects this, but maybe this gets you up and running at a reasonable price and you can always upgrade the wheel rim later. And then of course, this is a great option again for disabled drivers or people looking to get their kids into sim racing when they can't fit into the rigs, can't reach the pedals just to get them up and running. So this wheel rim again has a lot of reasons that I think separate it from a lot of the other wheel rims out there on the market to choose from. I think it again that 240 price point I was more than happy with the performance of this wheel rim. And then finally, of course, well, this is the wheel rim that is going to make every McLaren fan out there happy. We love getting branding, whether it be Porsche, Ferrari, or in this case, McLaren. When you're a fan, you like seeing that logo down on your wheel. It just makes you feel like you're holding the real thing. So I think that tells you just about everything you need to know about the McLaren Fanatic GT3 wheel rim. If you want any more details, of course, you'll find it at Fanatic's website. You can get all the details there. And if you have any questions of me, if there's something I didn't cover, be sure to email me at sean at the and i'll be sure to try to answer your questions be sure you subscribe to the channel so you can know about the next review we got a lot of reviews coming so you're going to want to sub subscribe so you can know about them coming in the future that's going to do it for this one this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track